Hello, everyone out there in string land. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the string instruments of the orchestra in our video lessons over the past few weeks. We've sure enjoyed making those videos for you. Um, you've seen some musicians playing alone and together, but there are some important string players you really haven't seen play yet. Us. That's right. On top of being music teachers, we're also active players and performers with over 80 combined years of playing experience between us. So, as a special treat for you this week, we've recorded a virtual performance of one of the most famous classical pieces ever written, Edvard Grieg's In the Hall of the Mountain King. We hope you enjoy it. about how string instruments sound and all the different types of music they can play, but we don't know how these instruments are even created. Well, funny you bring that up. The next two videos are going to show you just that. This first video is from the popular program How It's Made and will give us a glimpse of how they make And the second video is from Mr. Strobel, who will share a little bit about his cello making project. Hey there, fifth grade stringers, Mr. Strobel here. And since you're learning about how a violin is made this week, I would like to share a little bit about a project I've been working on, which is a cello. I've been making a cello. And now I started about 20 years ago, actually 22 years ago now, when I was still in college and graduate school. And um, I met someone in Bellingham who was making instruments and wanted me to try some of his cellos out for him. And I thought they sounded great. And then he asked me if I'd ever thought about making an instrument. And I'd, I'd never thought about that. And I'd actually done no woodworking before in my life, but I decided I would give it a go and work with my friend, John, and used his tools and his workshop. And we worked for a couple of years together. And one of the first things I did, he had me do was start with a big block of wood and cut it down to the neck and the scroll. So this is the first thing I made on my cello. And this took me about 250 hours worth of work to make. And it started as a big block of wood. I used a band saw to cut out the rough shape of this, but then everything else was by hand using hand tools like this little small finger plane, but I used a little bit bigger ones and tools like this metal scraper which can scrape and smooth the wood. We don't really use sandpaper when we're making instruments. We use metal scrapers and planes and some gouges and sharp edged tools. But there's my scroll. And my favorite part of my scroll is the chin. I made a little, a little water drop here, a little detail that's unique to this cello and glued the neck on, or sorry, the fingerboard to the neck. And it's all ready to go and put into the body. Another part of the cello that I, basically finished when I worked on this, last worked on this in the year 2000, was the top. This is the top made of spruce and the ribs made of maple. And I've even got a hole for my peg and it's on a frame so that the shape of it doesn't warp or distort over time. So this little frame holds it together, but you can see inside, you can see the sound holes, there's the bass bar, and all the linings are down there in the bottom. These ribs are only about a millimeter and a half thick, very thin. They started as planks of wood, 
and I used hand planes, a big jack plane, and I scraped off layer after layer of wood till I got it the thickness I wanted. And then you take the wood and you heat it over a hot iron. And the iron heats up something in wood called lignin. And imagine the, the lignin's like this, nice and tight. When you heat it up, it relaxes it and it becomes flexible. And so with heat and stretching, you can bend the wood, these sheets of wood you've carved down to make these curved shapes and then you glue them together. Currently what I'm working on is the back. And I started this 20 years ago, but I hadn't done a lot on it yet. So um, this is the back and this is separate. This is ready, not ready to glue, but it will be. You can see it's very shiny and you can see the wood grain in it. I had to finish arching this by hand and I really used a lot of the scraper on that to scrape away wood and planes to remove material. And now I'm doing what's called graduating. And you can see the inside is scooped out. I'm starting to scoop it out. And I've done most of the work, but I have a lot left to do, even though there's not much material because it's going slow right now, because really what I'm using is a scraper. And so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna tilt my camera down here and you can see my cellos in its cradle. It's a little hollow frame that I made. There it is revealed with some foam to protect the edges and a nice bath towel and it holds it in place. So when I work on it, it's supported and I don't scratch the top because I've done all this work. So this scraper is just a thin piece of metal and I use it to pull across and see if I can create some shavings. It's really slow because it doesn't make much wood. It doesn't take much off at a time. Let's see, I've got a few more. You can hear it scraping away. And now if I get those, oh yeah, I got a couple good curls. Though maybe you can see those on my finger. They're just almost like powder. Not very much wood comes off of the scraper. So I still have about a half a millimeter left to remove all over this. It's gonna take me hours and hours with this. But the beauty of the scraper is that it's really hard to make mistakes because if you remove too much wood, you can't put it back, can you? If I make a hole or take away too much, that could change the sound of my cello. So I'd really like to use this little finger plane with a little toothed blade on it because boy, it sure removes material a lot faster, but I could go too deep and then I'd regret it later. So this is the slow and careful way to use that scraper all over this and it will get it to a mirror finish, smooth, and then it'll be ready to glue to the back and the ribs. And then the neck gets set in the very top and then it'll be done. Then I add the strings and the tailpiece and the bridge and the end pin and all the parts you've seen in our other string videos. But that's gonna be hours and hours. So I expect, I hope to be done by the end of this school year. I'm still working on my cello and my workshop and I still visit my friend, John. He now lives in Cedra Woolley and I've been seeing him every couple of weeks. The weather's not getting very good, so I can't see him as often. I work outside and he works inside and we, we talk through a window to stay safe during uh, COVID-19. And um, it's been really fun to get back to this cello after 20 years and I'm excited to have it finished. And I hope you enjoyed my little tour of my cello making process and a couple of the tools that I use. Thanks. So something fun that I like to do, especially when I need to relax and unwind, is to color. In case you like to color too, we've included coloring pages for violin, viola, cello, and bass this week that you can print at home. We hope you enjoy relaxing and coloring. And now it's time for the joke of the week. What is the definition of a string quartet? A good violinist, a bad violinist, an ex-violinist, someone who hates violinists, all getting together to complain about composers. It's actually kind of true. Like, what was Ravel thinking here? <laughs> See you next week, guys. All right, bye. Take care. Bye.